Hello and welcome, my name is Eric Farewell and today we're bringing you a new sort of video. This is the Aviator Hangar and with us I have my good buddy AJ and our latest employee Matt who is also alumni and a very dear friend Josh. Hello. And we were hanging out a couple nights ago and we had a really great question come out of these two guys. Uh, Matt who finished his training earlier this year and Josh who trained I guess two yeah, years? I trained with Kyle Glee in 2019. So yeah, so two years ago. I mean I'll let you, I'll let you pose the question perfectly because you had, you had a good one. Everybody starts off training, you know, you learn to inflate, you learn to launch, you learn to land, but what do you do after that? You take those basic skills, you go home, but now you're by yourself, you don't have that instructor, so how do you actually gain more skills on your own? Yeah. That's my question. And what I loved about the question was that he asked the question after going through a very different training program that we have, and Kyle's an awesome guy, good instructor, but you asked the same question. I do have the same exact question. What was your experience like coming home from training? So I came home from training and there's a big group that we fly with back home. And everybody kind of just does their own thing. Like you go out and fly, you go you know, sightsee for an hour, or you come back or you do an, uh, a, a cross country and you come back and you don't actually practice anymore, right? That's, that's what training is all about is practicing those launching and landing skills, but we don't actually practice those things at home anymore. So. How do you force yourself to, to get back into that mindset of learning? Well, and the reason I asked AJ to be here is because AJ and I have a very similar deal where we find something we love that's better that, that we're not that great at yet and we have to like force ourselves to get really, really good. So I watched AJ at, within months of him having his first flight become a flight instructor because he flew every morning, every evening and really did the grind. Uh, I'm happy to share some of my experiences but I wanted him to share some of his like tactics because for me, I got done with training, I had two flights same as you. Same as me. And no I was to Kyle. Right. It's just weather. Bad luck. I, absolutely. Uh, mine, mine was many reasons. But, uh, you know, my instructor kept saying, well, you'll figure it out. You'll figure it out. And I got back home, and there's one other guy in the area that flew in the, flew paramotors 10 years ago here. And he was like, you got to use more power to take off. And that was the, the entirety of my additional training after, after finishing learning to fly. But there were a lot of things that I started doing as my skills increased to enforce that. And I wanted to ask AJ, what are some of the things that you would encourage pilots to do as they get home from their first, their first flight training? What, would, what did you do? What should people do to be like you? Yeah, that's, I mean, really good questions. I think that we talk about this some in training, but as you leave training, and like you mentioned, you get out and kind of start doing your own thing, you kind of lose sight of that stuff. And for me, it was come back and intern, become an instructor. And there's something about turning what you've just learned into words, verbalizing and you know, using uh, your vocabulary to get that out makes uh, you understand better when you teach others. Now that's not the path for everyone because everyone can't just stop what they're doing and go and become an instructor, but... Um, and quite frankly, not everyone should. Yeah, <laughs> let's, let's be honest. <laughs> um, but we've have a couple of instructors that have gone the exact same path that I did and you can just see them advance much faster and progress much faster. But like I said, we can't all do that. For me, I think it was a matter of, I wanted to master something before I started doing cross countries. Some people that come to train, that's their main incentive is to get out, start flying with their buddies and do 50 mile cross countries. For me, it was get as good as I can at something so that when I'm out in the middle of nowhere or in a new spot, I know that I can spot land within a five foot radius or whatever that may be. So I wanted to learn as much as I could as quickly as I could. So I just focused on skill building immediately after I left training. And, uh, and that's kind of the idea of our refining parameter skills videos that we've posted. Uh, it's just every single flight going out and working a quarter of your flight or 20% or of your flight on building those skills and just whether it be spot landing or you know crosswind launches, there's all kinds of different things you can work on. But I think a matter of most of it is just gonna be experience. You can't, you can't just gain knowledge without using, getting experience. And it's just going out and flying as much as possible, staying current and specifically working on those skill building aspects that we talk about in refining parameter skills. And see, I, I had kind of a similar experience. For me, my first, I'd say six months of flying, which I flew every opportunity I got, it was incredibly frustrating because I, I failed so many launches. Like I, for me, the launch process was something that I felt really inept at leaving training. So I would come out and I would fly five launches, period. If it took me 25 to get there, I was gonna launch five times and land five times. And then as my skills built, and we talked about this some the other night, like I made a game out of it. At our airport, we have these grates where they, they, you know, there's uh, drainage and it's surrounded by concrete. And I say, okay, I'm gonna take off and I'm gonna spot land on that corner. And then work my way around like a clock. And then work my way on the grates, individual corners, and continuously try to improve both my skills landing and taking off. I, I think that it's something that each of you guys, as you're leaving as a beginner immediate pilots, you know, you've got say 30, 40 flights coming through training with us. You need to give yourself a mission 
every day. So it's not just the cross country because that kind of puts you in, in this false sense of security of like, oh, the motor runs all the time. Oh, like everything works. But if you go out and it's, it's switchy winds and you're challenged to inflate, you're challenged to fly, then put in the effort. We used to always say for every hour of flying, you should do an hour of kiting. I don't think that's practical for most people because they, they kind of got the itch, they got to yeah. fly. But I mean, how much kiting do you guys do now? Honestly, I haven't done much kiting out of training at all. Mainly at fly-ins. When I go to fly-ins, I'm out there kiting, you know, midday and just having fun. And that's about it. So if I'm going out to the LZ, it's to fly. I'm not going out to kite. I'm going out. We're gonna we're gonna wet. fix this. We're gonna fix this. <laughs> we got we have to. If I get to the LZ early, I'll, I'll I'll bring the wing out and I'll kite for half an hour or so, but then I'll go fly for two hours. Right. Right. I, my my little brother was the king of this. He kited more than any other pilot I've ever met, and he made it look like a dream like his favorite thing would be to, on a high wind day is like stand still and slowly let himself down to look like he was doing a, like a push-up just face on the ground and then break back up every time and I, I looked at that and I was like at the time like I, I can do that kind of but not nearly as well as he did um, but those are the kind of skills that build up so that when you have like the humbling experience I had this weekend in Tennessee where I just about ate crap three times in one launch down a hill up another hill had to turn without going over a runway and if I didn't have the building blocks of trying to force myself forward, I don't think there's any way I could have made that launch. And honestly, I just got lucky. <laughs> so. for, for me, it's a lot of, I don't know what I don't know. Right. And when I get up there, I'm flying, you know, I use my trimmers, wingtip steering, but I've not tied in 2D steering yet. I don't even know how. I've seen AJ's videos, I've watched them, great information, but honestly, trying to do it my, by myself without an instructor, that terrifies me. Well, so this is the kind of the payoff for this video. So. AJ and I have put together a pretty cool little step-by-step -step where you should be your first 100 hours list. It's in the description below. Check it out. See which ones you can check off, which ones you've already accomplished, what you already know how to do, whether it's foot drags, wing tips, whatever it is that you're working toward. These are things that we expect, if you are a pretty moderately accomplished pilot, that you should be able to do in your first 100 hours. And if you like this idea, you want to see more stuff like this, leave us ideas down in the comments. We're going to keep the video short, but uh, I think we should do more roundtable stuff like this and get good questions from friends and answer them. Yeah, cool. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, feel free to check out all the information down in the description below. Leave us a comment, leave us a like, and as always, subscribe, hit the bell. Thanks for watching. See you later. And go visit ppgzone.com. Yes, yes, his website. It's awesome. <laughs> <laughs>